Well, from Cannes to Tel Aviv, because extravagant characters, over-the-top outfits and elaborate dance routines, it's the Eurovision Song Contest. It kicked off last night as the first round of countries tried to secure their spot in final in on Saturday. Sir Richard Arnold is in Tel Aviv. Sir Richard it Arnold. Is, is <laughs> so Richard Arnold is there. Oh, he with should a bunch be of, sir, though, With a motley be. crew of people in Union Jacks that he's found lying on the beach somewhere. What's going on, Richard? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning, uh, Susanna and Charlotte. Yes, here we are in the shadow of Netra, of course. The reason why we're here in Israel for the Eurovision Song Contest 2019, the biggest music event in the world, 180 million fans worldwide, 8 million at home tuning in on Saturday night. And as you pointed out, Piers, we scraped the pavements for the British fans this morning. <laughs> um, it was a very late night. Some 50,000 fans were down here from Tel Aviv, actually, in the Eurovision Village. This lot, however, would you, would you call it a drizzle or a trickle of fans, Sean? Yeah, a dribble, maybe. Uh, yeah, a dribble, yeah. yes. I, 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 I feel your pain this morning. We've all had very little sleep. The big story, of course, out here in Tel Aviv is whether or not the material girl Madonna will actually perform. We know that she is in town, and lovely Denise here from Exeter, Exeter's very own Denise, uh, was actually at the arena last night and uh, witnessed something rather special, didn't you? I did, yes. I was rather late leaving, and I got locked in the venue, and I found out they were locked me in because Madonna's guys were dancing, rehearsing on the stage. Got, got locked in for an hour and a half. An hour and a half. Thank you for that. So we know the material girl, well, at least her dancers are throwing shapes. Well, whether she will turn up, you'll have to find out on Saturday. So a couple of highlights for me last night. Certainly Australia, they're, they're in it to uh, win it, but uh, you can't get away from Iceland. I'm not sure this is what Mother wanted when she went there, but uh, this is Hutari, the first time that Iceland has qualified in five years for the grand final. Well, Dr. Hillary always says to me, it's extraordinary what you can pick up when you're abroad, and I have to say this is a first even for me. Clements, Matthias, and this one, doesn't speak at all, apparently, but we'll see if we can't get a little something out of it in just a moment. Um, hate will prevail doesn't normally seem like the sentiment for Eurovision, which is this wonderful unifying uh, event. Um, tell us a little bit about the song, sir. Well, hate will prevail. We see it as a dystopia. It's a reflection on power and powerlessness, hope and hopelessness. And if we don't unite or find a way for peace, then hate will prevail. We are talking about pop and politics, um, sort of mutating, if you like, and blending together today. Do you think pop and politics go hand in hand? Yes, we do think that pop and politics go hand in hand. Wonderful. Um, I know it's been quite a late night. Do you just want to have a? Have you got a message for your your fans in Iceland and the UK? Because obviously you're you're, you're huge in the UK now. Dear fans in the UK, remember to love each other before hatred prevails. And uh, this young man here um, apparently is the son of the Icelandic ambassador to the UK. Um, do you have anything to say? I think his safe word is Dew's point. Um, I'll be back <laughs> tomorrow with Ryland and Scott Mills. That's it from Eurovision uh, Richard, for Richard, today. Richard. All back to mine, boys. Richard. Richard, can you hear me? Yes, darling. Yeah, that's enough yes, odd balls. That's enough odd balls from Iceland for one week. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, can you hear me? What do you think, Piers? I just think yes, you I and your you. weird little Icelandic friends, mate, are all a bit odd. It's all a bit creepy. It's all a bit Game of Thrones, yeah. to be fair. Uh, can I ask you one question about this this Eurovision Song Thank Contest? You. Why is Australia entering the Eurovision yep. Song Contest? Since when would they? in the Eurozone. Well, you might ask, why is the Eurovision Song Contest in Tel Aviv and Israel? Right. So, so what? I don't get any of this. The parameters of Eurovision are stretching. Thank you very much indeed. But if Australia do win, and as I say, they are absolutely in it to win it, and they're one of the strong favourites. It's just called the Eurovision Song Contest. Why is Australia allowed to compete? It's not called do, the Australia. Do you know why Australia is actually allowed ask, in the competition? Ask old, ask old Hannibal Lecter there. Why... Why, uh, <laughs> why is Australia in it? Ask can him you, that when he stop preaching about love and peace. Can you hear peace. the crying of the lambs? <laughs> yeah. Still nothing. God. Back to you in the UK. All uh, right, good luck, Dickie. Uh, so apparently, they've particip so they participated in a 2015 contest set to be a one-off event, only to perform if they won, but then they participated again and just came back. I guess absolutely they ridiculous. Australia should not be, be allowed in the Eurovision Song.